Welcome, good to see you. Welcome this uh, first uh, Sunday in April uh, worship service at First Christian Church. It is glad that uh, all of you have gathered and that we have others with us uh, streaming. We invite you, if you would uh, like to, those of you who uh, are streaming, if you have what passes for bread and cup, uh, you can uh, participate in communion or the Lord's Supper, just a few minutes led by our elders, and you are most welcome to do that. We worship in a number of ways, and uh, we worship as well today through beautiful music and song, and so let us hear Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, and worship through that gift. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything in our lives, the good, the bad, and the sad. We may not understand the sadness and the bad things, but we know you walk with us through the storms. You are amazing. Please stand and sing Holy Ground, page 122, 112. seated. I invite you to share uh, how you've seen God this week. How have you seen God this last week? Yes, Della. Thank you. So um, uh, through your great generosity, so thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, we were able to raise about $400. We gave that to the victims of the tornado in Winterset. 
uh, through gift cards. Uh, Della uh, took those down this last week. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, Della reported that they are beginning to come together and heal and because of your help and, and others like you. So thank you very much. Jim, you had your hand up. I just see him every morning. When I look outside <coughs> at the night and I see the sunrise, I just, it's just beautiful. Praise God for that. You see him every morning. You get up and it's beautiful and you see a great sunrise. So thank you, Jim, very much for that. Good reminder. Start with God in the morning. Others? Yes, Margaret. I just looked out of my bird bath uh, the other evening, and there was a big fat red cardinal sitting there soaking. <laughs> so you looked out in your bird bath, and you saw a big cardinal soaking and enjoying the, the day. Uh, no doubt the sun, sunlight. We had sunlight this last, sunshine this last week. So that's good. Very good. Others? Uh, Kay's not here, but Steve's here, and we continue to see God every week through our uh, membership class or baptism class or our tour of faith class. And by the way, we'll have baptisms next week uh, right here. Uh, Niall Hall and uh, Tommy Harbison uh, will be baptized next week. Uh, so come and, and bring your friends for that. Uh, that'll be meaningful. Uh, but we just, in, in all of our interaction, uh, we see God. We actually walked and prayed through the sanctuary uh, this last week. That was our part of our lesson. Uh, as the boys and Kay and Steve and I all walked and prayed and thought about God and uh, it was just really meaningful. So with that, uh, I ask for a time of meaningful prayer. I pray for that for all of us. So let's go to God in prayer, please. As we focus on God and Jesus the Christ, we breathe deeply of God's good spirit. We now pray together as we first listen for God's word to us. God of grace, we thank you for all of these ways that we see you and know you, for the ways that we see your face. We, as the Bible says, seek your face, O God, and in different ways, your, uh, you reveal your face to us. And we are just so grateful for that revelation, for your grace, for your love upon love upon love that fills our lives, especially this season of Lent for us a season for change, a season of repentance, a season of second chance, a, a season to make a new decision to follow you. And so we gra are so grateful for that opportunity. God of reflection, we thank you for ways that we are able to look into the mirror and see how we need to turn our lives around. And so we do that now. We confess our sin, we give it to you, we embrace your love for us, and we are grateful for your forgiveness. God of choices, we thank you for blessing us with choices, with the opportunity to make a choice, to begin anew, to make a new choice, to be for you and with you. We are so grateful for that opportunity. And like the son mentioned in the Bible 
that we will look at in just a few minutes. We are so grateful for another choice, a new day, another hour, another minute to begin again, to embrace your way and to walk in your path. Thank you for that gift, O oh God. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to pray to you our own prayers, whatever those prayers are, whatever joys or concerns we have. We pray to you them now, whatever prayer we have. We pray those in, with our spoken words and with our silent words. God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Lord, we ask for your healing for Kathy and David and Jill, all with their cancer, for Tatum with her broken leg and Diane with her broken hip. We pray for Caleb for his long recovery from surgery. We pray for Brett and Janet's family after the passing of their niece, Michaela, in Kansas, and ask that you be with that family with your comfort and strength. We pray for peace in our world and especially for the country of Ukraine and for protection for all people, including our military, our own military personnel, wherever they are. We pray for police, fire, first responders, all those who serve selflessly. We pray for our new church starts within this region, our first Pacific Islanders in Bismarck and our River Valley Disciples in Des Moines, as well as the Chukchi Church in Ottumwa. We pray for our church, O oh God, for a fresh beginning, for our vision team that continues to explore and learn new things about your direction for us, as well as our Tour of Faith class that I mentioned a few moments ago. God, all of these prayers we pray in the name and in the grace of Jesus, the one who taught us our Lord's Prayer, which we pray to you again, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us glorify God with prayer and song through our song Gloria Patri. Please uh, stand if you'd like, please. invite uh, the young people down for uh, the children's moment and um, I have another I see another uh, joy uh, which is a uh, it looks like it's grandparents day so Sherry has her grandchildren that are coming down and then uh, the Schultzes uh, have a grandchild coming down as well and I do not have enough stuff for the end of <laughs> my sermon. So how about we make a deal? Um, I'll, I'll give stuff to you four at the end, and then when you come back, you'll get two of whatever I have, okay? Does that sound good? All right, Eli, 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 it's so good to see you. Welcome, welcome. You're walking really well. Grandma's doing a good job with you. It's nice to see you. <laughs> and David and Kelsey are here, so it's daughter and son day as well. Uh, so um, we're going we're gonna to actually start uh, with, let me move this over. Um, we're going to actually start with a, with a little story 
uh, which will actually be the, the main uh, message of our time here. Um, and so I, I'm going to kind of divide you all in a couple groups, all right? Um, so uh, the, the, he, here are the two groups. Um, one group, which will be you three, okay? Uh, wait a minute, let, let's start with names, because I, I don't know everybody. Um, so can you tell us your name? My name is Lennox. Lennox, that's a great name. Your name? Justin James? Jackson. Ja Jackson James. Yes. Jackson. And Kyson. 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 Oh, that's a great name. We, we know Eli. Hi, Eli. Nice to see you, bud. And then Talon and Tyler. You guys spoke. They spoke. Your kids spoke. This is great. This is just a great day. Okay, so it's nice to meet everybody. Um, so you three, uh, I'm going to ask a question. And you're gonna you're gonna give me two answers. You're gonna say no, and then uh, and then you're gonna say yes. And I'll cue you to say so you're gonna say no first, all right? And then um, the other three. So Eli, uh, who's listening intently to the sermon, <laughs> uh, Eli and uh, Kyson and Jackson, you're gonna say yes, and then when we start to do something, you're gonna say no. Okay. So I've got it. You're gonna say yes, and then you're gonna say no. You're gonna say no, and then you're gonna say yes. So here we go. So let's all pretend I'm your father, all right? And there's a big rock sitting right over there, and I need some help moving it, okay? So um, will you three help me? No. Say, oh, good no. job. Now, will you three help me? Yes. You're saying yes. So Eli's saying yes. He's ra he's raising his hand. That's good. All right. So now. Let's go over to move it. And those three of you who said no, now you say yes. Okay, come on over. And then you three who said yes, I say come on over to move it. You're going to say no. No. Don't want to now. Okay, so you three, come on over. <laughs> let's move this big rock. Oh my gosh, let's get on this end. Let's get on this end, everybody. Okay, and, and I'll get over here. Oh. Let's move it. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. Okay, that's enough. Good job, everyone. All right, let's go back. You guys are great. You played your roles really well. And this is actually a story. This is a story in the Bible of Jesus. And um, Jesus then asked, and so I'll ask all of you the question, which did the will of the Father, which did what the Father wanted? The first group? Or the second group? The second, well, actually. <laughs> which, which actually went over and moved the rock? Which group? First. The first group, that's right. Even though the second group said yes, they, they, like, they were eager to go, and they're like, nah, yeah, I don't want to now. The first group was like, nah, we don't want to now. But they went ahead and did it. So the point being that um, got two things. God lets us change our minds to do what God wants. And the second thing is, um, if we do the will of God, that's what God wants. Okay? So what I want to, uh, this to, the little gift I'm about to give you after we pray. And again, you get two next time, all right, buddy? So, uh, Grandma, you got to bring it back, all right, please? <laughs> Maybe Easter or, or Palm Sunday or something. So uh, th this is a little chocolate. They're very small. Uh, they're very small, Grandma, Mom, and Dad. And it's in the shape of, what's in the shape of? Easter. Yeah, Easter, right? It, but what does it look like? Egg. It's an egg. egg. Yeah, it's in the shape of an egg. And an egg is, uh, when it comes out of a chicken, is like a new start, right? A new beginning. And God gives all of us new beginnings. Okay, that's what I, when you, whenever you look at this and eat the chocolate, I'll let your grandma and your parents tell you when you can eat it. Uh, let them be in charge of that. I want you to think about a, a new beginning, another choice, okay? So, uh, let's do a quick prayer. I'll say something, and you say something back, and then I'll give the four of you a chocolate, okay? Let's pray. Let's please repeat after me. It's I say, you say prayer. Dear God. 
Thank, thank you. For a sec, for a second chance. And for following you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm going to put out two here and put out two here. This is contactless chocolate giving. And thank you very much. And you can go sit with your family. Very nice. Eli, we'll give you something too next time. You'll get two next time as well. Great job, everybody. Let's uh, applaud the kids and the parents and the grandparents. Too. From, I'm reading from Matthew 21, verses 28 to 31, the parable of the two sons. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of the righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Amen. We give thanks to God for this word. Thank you, Jeannie, for reading. It's just a joy to see Eli walking, uh, see that in person. And uh, before we move into our uh, prayer and then the sermon, I want to say a little word about uh, what, how I delivered the sermon, part of the sermon last week, which... Uh, some might say passionately, uh, others might say loudly. I want to say just a couple brief things about that. One about tone and one about topic. First of all, uh, if anyone was offended by the way that I did that, uh, my, my sincere apologies. The point was not to offend, uh, but to inspire. Uh, for those who uh, appreciated that, uh, uh, that passion, uh, I, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome for that. But the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of just sermons in general and preaching in general is topic or subject of a sermon. So the gospel is all about um, having us become aware of our sin, which is what Lent is all about, and then turning from that sin and, and turning... Turning from uh, turning to God, and I want to. I've used this image with a lot of you before, uh, but just to kind of put it on the record, put it out there in streaming land. Um, I want you to be aware that um, in the preaching, uh, I, I am the one being preached to as well as you all, and because I know myself, the preacher Doug knows himself better then the preacher knows the rest of you. I preach first to myself, right? So if, I, if I'm preaching, it's like I'm holding a big mirror to myself, and I, to be honest with you, I'm the biggest sinner in the room, or I'm the biggest sinner in, on the Internet <laughs> in that preaching moment, okay? So, so I'm the one that I feel like I'm preaching to the most. So I'm, I'm right with you uh, in all of that. And the intent is for all of us to turn from our sin and to uh, embrace God. So again, I just wanted to clarify the way that I look at the preaching moment, that I, I, look, I look at how sermons are given, especially during the moments that I feel God has given me a passionate uh, message to offer. Uh, today is not that day. Uh, today is the typical preaching moment, but I just wanted to explain that. And with that, let us have a word of prayer. Let's pray, please. God, be with us 
in this time so that we might indeed celebrate this church and ourselves and our life with you and that we might also be challenged to turn to you again and to continue to follow you as your disciples. We pray this, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So this Lent, and we, we finish up with this sermon uh, in this sermon series, of back to the basics of our faith. And last Sunday, we looked at the vision and mission and mantra of our church that we identified uh, several years ago. And this Sunday, we look at the values and the personality of our church, uh, of ourselves as followers of the Christ, for us to both celebrate and be challenged by what we've said about ourselves. So I'll show you, we'll, we'll do this, this won't, take, this won't take long, I don't think, but what I want to do is first put up the values that, that we said about ourselves several years ago, ourselves as individuals, ourselves as families, and ourselves as church. And what I want to ask us to do as we go through each paragraph is to celebrate this, say, yeah, we're doing it, you know, uh, let's, let's celebrate that, but also think about how we might do better. And if you want to shout out something, that's fine. We're not going to spend a lot of time on each paragraph, on, on each slide. Um, but if you feel compelled to just shout something out, uh, feel free to do that. Values. We strive to create a culture of support and grace at First Christian Church. God and, and our faith are at the center of everything informing what we do and say. So let's, for a moment, celebrate that. I have a thousand times and over experienced support and grace at this church. So think about that for just a few seconds. And then at First Christian Church, you'll find, one, a loving, caring church family. We're friendly. It's easy to find your niche and meet friends. So let's celebrate how we do that. And let's also think about how we might do that better. Next paragraph. Respect for differing opinions, background, and beliefs, as well as your time and individual faith needs. We are honest with each other, and, our, and through our actions, we live what we believe and say. How, let's celebrate that. How do we do that? Again, I've seen that over and over and over again at this church. How can we do better? How can we do better at that respect? Next slide. A generous spirit is in the air at First Christian Church. We are involved in our church and in our community, supporting each other and our neighbors in Dallas County through fellowship and outreach. So let's celebrate that again. Kids' clothes closet, the gift cards to Winterset are two recent examples of that. Let's think about, as well, how we can do better at that generous spirit. Next slide. A vibrant, fun-loving atmosphere. It's true here at First Christian Church. We mix in a lot of laughs in service to God. Again, let's celebrate that. How have we done that well? Just have to gather around at the donut time, around those tables, downstairs, and that happens every Sunday. How can we do that better? And then the last one of our values Thirst for learning through small study groups, thought-provoking services, community outreach, and weekly inspiration. We seek fresh ways to feed our faith, deepen our understanding, helping us to find the best, best paths that enrich and support our everyday lives. How do we do that? Well, think about the number of groups, the times where you've had conversation, where you've been lift it up, or you contribute something, or someone says something, and you grow in your faith, and how can we do that better?
how does that particular value challenge us to do better at a thirst for learning? Let's look at personality for our last slide. Uh, warm and welcoming, genuine, curious, diverse, active, and fun. We said that about ourselves uh, a few years ago. How are we each of these aspects of this personality? What other aspects might we want to add? And then finally, how can we, how, how is God challenging us to be more like that? Or more like the Christ followers or the Jesus followers that God wants us to be? How can we be more like that? So I encourage you to uh, look these up. Uh, it's up there on our website, these, this vision, mission, uh, and the, the uh, mantra, as well as our values and our personality, it's all there, to think about, to pray about, again, how we do these well, what are our strengths, and then how can we do better? These values and personalities spur us on to act more like a discipleship church and less like a membership church. So let me talk about those two kinds of churches. As a church that follows Jesus, which is a discipleship church, not so much as a church that prefers to be members and gathers all the privileges of membership. Being a member is great. I love being a member of a church. I know you do as well. But that's different. That's a different um, understanding than being a disciple. Being a member can have the connotation, and this is how I'm using it, can have the connotation of privilege. And this the institution is supposed to serve me. And that's certainly true at times. But Jesus asks us, if we recall, to be more of a disciple, a follower. We see that in this story. It's not about privilege and membership in this story of the two sons. It's all about which one does the will of the Father, the parent, God? Which one is doing the will of God? Being just a member and focusing solely on our own privileges is sin whenever we think of this as club membership with, with ourselves being served rather than serving others. So I want to explore this particular dichotomy or difference very briefly in another series of slides. So the next slide is a membership church focuses on entitlement and privilege. A discipleship church focuses on following Jesus. Next slide. I've already talked about that. A membership church expects to be served. A discipleship church expects to serve like Jesus. Talked about that as well. Next slide. A membership church checks boxes about what they believe a member deserves. A discipleship church concerns itself with what they believe Jesus is calling them to do. Next slide. A membership church wants programs and people that continue what they've always done. And a lot of that's good. A lot of what we've always done is good. A discipleship church church goes further and offers programs that fulfill the hopes and dreams and fills the spirit of its own members and other people. We also think about, pray about, reach out to people beyond these four walls. Next slide. A membership church mainly focuses on itself and its own need, what needs, while a discipleship church mainly focuses on others and their needs. That doesn't mean our own needs aren't being met. That's why we're here. But we are focused on others as well and often more than just focused on ourselves, more self, selfishly focused. And God is asking us to be more selflessly focused. 
So it comes down really to the, these questions. Whose are we? Do we belong to God? Or do we belong just to ourselves? Whose are we? Healthy things grow. I used this quote by Rick Warren all this last month. We must first prune the unhealthy things in our lives in order for the plant of our faith and our lives and the church to grow. We prune the opposite thing, the things that are opposite of those values and personality I presented a few moments ago about our church. We prune the entitlement that comes with a more membership focus and, the feel, and, and we let grow whenever we do that the feelings of following and the thoughts of following Jesus along the path that God the Father, that God the Parent wants us to follow. As we approach Holy Week in a little over a week, we know that Jesus is teaching in the temple every day, every single day of Holy Week, Jesus is teaching in the temple. And the story I told, that, that actually Jeannie told, and then I told with the children during the children's moment, is the second story of that week, according to the book of Matthew. It's the second story, the second teaching moment, if you will, that Jesus has. And so it's very important. And which of the two does the will of the Father? It's the second son, just like we, we saw in, in what Jeannie said and in what we did with the children. Which causes us to, and, and notice that, that that son, that second son is not perfect, right? This is not a message or our Christian life is not about being perfect. The second son, when asked the question to go out and work in the vineyard, what does he say? At first, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I mean, you got to, you kind of get the image of, you know, in our main image of one of those boys, like, no, nah, not going to do that. And yet, so he's not perfect. We're not perfect. And yet, Jesus gives him the opportunity in the story to change his mind and to turn, and then to go out into the vineyard and do the work of God or move the rock, just like uh, the kids and I did. The question for us is, which son are we? Are we the second son? Are we the first son? We believe we are following Jesus, but in the vineyard of life, do we refuse to do God's work? Do we refuse to forgive? Do we not go out and seek the lost? Do we want things done just our way? Do we hold on to resentments and grudges? Do we want nothing to change about our life and our work and our church? Or do we choose to be the second son? And we want to hold on to these things, but we also then eventually say yes to God in Christ. And we are transformed. We're not perfect, and we may refuse to go. But, as the son in the story, we eventually go out into the vineyard, and we work in the vineyard with our Lord. And we do the things that God wants us to do. And we forgive, and we love, and we repent, and we change our lives so that we finally follow God in all the ways God wants us to follow God. And we become the church. We become the families. We become the people that God wants us to be. I know that I want that for my life. I want to be more like Jesus. And I look in the mirror. And I see that I fall short. And I want to change. What about you? Do you want to change? Do you want to be like the first son? 
Who do we choose to be? What kind of church do we choose to be? Membership church mainly or discipleship church mainly? Who do we follow? Ourselves or God? Those are the questions for us this Sunday in Lent. And I ask us to reflect, pray, think, and to let God lead us well to make the choices that God inspires us to make. Will you pray with me, please? God be with us in Jesus to help us change and grow and become more like Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song of invitation is an opportunity for us to give our lives to Christ again. It's an opportunity for anyone wanting to become a member of this church to do so by coming down and joining by confession of faith or transfer membership from another church. It, but it is an opportunity for all of us to commit ourselves to Christ again through a decision as we sing this song. So let us sing together, softly and tenderly, verses 1 through 3, please. And if you would like, stand as you sing. I've got this feeling that as I grow older, I keep learning new things. Uh, I know that I have to take better care of myself, 
In fact, this year I have a goal to lose 10 pounds, and so far I've only got 14 to go. <laughs> I've also learned that uh, women who carry a little excess weight tend to live longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> and I've learned to uh, not bore kids about how bad it was when I was a kid that they don't really care that I had to walk through nine feet of shag carpet to turn off the uh, TV. <laughs> And I have to learn, uh, forget about five things to learn one new thing because there's just not any room left up here. Uh, <laughs> I've learned that although I may grumble and balk at some of the things that I need to do for the Lord, I need to keep trying. I need to try to be the good son. And I know that if I am, God will take care of the rest. Our communion hymn this morning is Eat This Bread, page 414. Please stand. took a loaf of bread after blessing it he broke it and he gave it to them and he said take this is my body then he took a cup after giving thanks he gave it to them and all of them drank from it he said this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many truly I tell you I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when we drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom shall we pray <coughs> Heavenly Father and Lord of our lives, we give thanks for your Son, your only Son, who gave his life on the cross for each one of us, though we did nothing to deserve his sacrifice. We have no words except thank you, thank you, every day, every moment of our lives. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. As we have been uh, given by God in the Lord's Supper, so we have ourselves an opportunity to give to others, to give for God's kingdom and God's mission. Uh, that comes through time, talent, and treasure. Uh, feel free to give of your uh, treasure uh, if, if you would like, however you want to do that. There's a button on our website. If you're new to us, don't feel like you have to give, but however you feel called to give uh, is the most important thing to follow God in that way. Our, uh, uh, as we have given, 
our response is to uh, give thanks to God for what we have and for what we can give. And so in that thanksgiving, let us please now sing the doxology. And if you would like, please stand. just a few announcements with you uh, before we leave. Uh, right after this service, you are welcome to go downstairs in the Fellowship Hall for donuts and coffee and other, other beverages. Um, our worship uh, uh, coming up this week, as you look in your announcement list, is uh, first Wednesday of each month. Our region will be uh, teaching a lesson. It'll be participatory. It'll, it'll be by Zoom. And that is 6.30 on Wednesday, if you would like to um, be part of that. And there's a link that you can click, and that will come out in our uh, weekly uplift. And it will also be available, this link, uh, through our region. And call our church office or me or text me or whatever, and we can, we can help you with that. Our Easter lily orders are uh, about uh, up. Uh, we have about another week. Uh, if you would like an Easter lily, uh, please uh, uh, make fill one of these out, and then those will adorn our chancel area. Be beautiful for uh, Sunday Sunday morning. Our um, services, uh, church services, are about to change. Our online service is about to change, so uh, we will not continue streaming after today this service. But there'll be another service that we video and then we will stream starting Friday. And every Friday we will stream a different serv different uh, a service that will be the same as the following Sunday service, same scripture, but uh, a little more teaching about the Bible, uh, less all the, all the other stuff. It will still have stories and hopefully something entertaining. It will have something entertaining uh, for us to watch as well. Um, also coming up, uh, as I indicated, Palm Sunday, next Sunday, uh, baptisms, and then the Easter Sunday, which is the 17th, we will have an Easter breakfast. That has been resurrected, and we're excited about that. There's a flyer about this uh, in your bulletin. That will be at 8.30, and if you want to contribute to that from 8.30 to 10, uh, feel free to call the church office, but if you want to go, Please feel free to call the church office so that we have an idea of how much uh, a casserole and other goodies uh, to have. All right, lots going on. There's also Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services. Holy Week, we'll talk about that next week, um, Thursday and Friday of Holy Week. But anything else I've missed? If not, then let us now receive our benediction. God, please send us forth from here making the best choices for you. We pray this, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.